Jetzt geht's los. Ja, mein Name ist Katja Riemann. Ich lebe in Berlin. Das Schöne an Berlin ist, dass man Berliner werden kann. Ich bin Wahlberliner, Wahlberlinerin. Und ich bin performative Künstlerin, so würde ich es äh, inzwischen nennen, gelernte Schauspielerin. Ich habe äh, zuerst Tanz studiert und dann in Hamburg. Und dann habe ich Schauspiel studiert und war dann viele Jahre am Theater fest engagiert, sowohl in München als auch in Berlin. Ähm, und habe dann bin schwanger geworden und habe dann das Theater verlassen und habe begonnen, mir sozusagen die Filmwelt zu erobern. Zu einem Zeitpunkt, als ich noch immer sehr jung war, gemeinsam mit Filmstudierenden, die ihre ersten Filme machten und wir voll Freude begannen, Filme zu drehen mit sehr wenig Budget. Und siehe da, das war dann in den 90er Jahren, viele dieser Filme sind sehr erfolgreich geworden kommerziell. Ja, in meiner Suche als Künstlerin habe ich eigentlich immer wieder, wie soll ich sagen, Herausforderungen gesucht aus letztlich Neugier und dem, dem Interesse, sich mit, mich mit etwas zu beschäftigen, was ich so noch nicht kenne und auf diverse Weise Geschichten zu erzählen. Und so kam es dann, nachdem wir einen Musikfilm gedreht hatten, der Bandits hieß, dass ich ein Angebot erhielt, eine, so ein Soloalbum zu machen. Und dann, nach zwei Jahren im Studio, war, dachte ich, ich bin ja aber eigentlich so ein Bühnenmensch. Und so habe ich eine Jazzband gegründet. Was soll ich euch noch erzählen? Es <lacht> ist ja immer auch die Frage, was, was kommt auf dich zu? Und Warum kommt das jetzt gerade? Und ich glaube, dass alles auf seinen Platz fällt. Und manchmal muss man einfach nur erkennen, was begegnet mir da in dem Moment. Und so war das auch ganz sicherlich mit diesem Film, den ich jetzt drehen durfte für Arte. Aufgrund des Umstandes, dass mein, die Herausgabe meines Buches äh, Jeder hat niemand darf in die Corona-Zeit fiel und dann die Buchmesse ausfiel und das ganze äh, Lesereise in drei Ländern abgesagt wurde und die Literaturfestivals äh, ihre Touren schließen mussten etc., sagte dann mein, mein Lektor vom Fischer Verlag, er muss jetzt nachlegen, Katja. Und so äh, habe ich eine Idee gepitcht, ein Buch zu schreiben über Geflüchtetenlager. <lacht> So begann ich mit meiner ersten Reise im Sommer 20 nach Griechenland, nach Lesbos, nach Kios, nach Athen. Hatte das vorbereitet über ein paar Monate hinweg mit, äh, um mit diversen lokalen Nichtregierungsorganisationen in Kontakt zu kommen. Das war wirklich großartig. Und als ich zurückkam von dieser sehr intensiven Reise nach Deutschland, dachte ich, da gibt es eine Organisation, über die würde ich gerne den Film machen für Arte. Aus dem Grund, weil sie vielleicht eine Art Schnittstelle sein könnte zwischen meinen beiden Leidenschaften, dem der Filmschaffenden und der humanitär Arbeitenden. Und das ist eine Organisation, die eine Filmschule ist. Und der Titel dieses Films ist ein Zitat einer der Studierenden. Und der Film heißt dann Here We Are, eine Filmschule in Moria. Und den werden Sie jetzt sehen. When I was in Serbia, I met Doug. After a while, Doug announced that he's joining me here on Lesbos. We did a first pilot project on photography on media skills. Can I bring you the car? Yeah, yeah. Okay, see you I'll down. see you down there. It worked well, and then we decided, okay, let's create a project of it, a foundation, and let's make it our home. We started with something that was a bit more of an opportunity for young people here to spend three, four hours a day learning how to use their cell phones in a more professional way, look at the world a little differently, build a little community of media creators. With everything? Yeah. And then we saw the potential for this to become something a bit more of a game-changing mm -hmm. school. I'm gonna put this one inside. I don't think it's okay. gonna fit. Something that could like attack a gap 
that was being ignored, which was secondary level education for people to have skills, to have training. Instead of bringing the crisis into the classroom, how could we bring that classroom to the crisis? Lesbos, Griechenland. Seit 2018 gibt es in dem wohl berühmtesten geflüchteten Lager in Moria eine Filmschule, die Refocus Media Labs heißt. Im Sommer 2020 lernte ich sie kennen und kehrte zurück, um einen Film über sie zu drehen. My name is Sonia Nanjik. I'm Polish originally. For quite some time, I worked for the European Parliament in Brussels. My name is Douglas Herman, and I'm one of the co-founders of Refocus Media Labs. But before we embarked on this adventure, uh, I was doing similar work with high school students in America. There's such a demand here for activity and for educational opportunities and for skill development that it really isn't that challenging finding people. What, what changes do you, do you need to make? What changes? How would we recruit? How would we find students? How would we find people to know about us and come to the classes? And here, we didn't have to worry about any of those things. Specifically because One Happy Family is this yes. amazing community that had lots of people coming mm -hmm. all the time. We would just put a poster up really quickly to just say, hey, classes will be Monday through Friday from this hour to this hour, put it up in three languages, and we'd have a waiting list within one day. OHF, oder One Happy Family, ist ein Community Center, gegründet von Schweizern und Griechen, unter deren Dach diverse humanitäre Organisationen ihre Projekte untergebracht und begonnen haben. OHF hatte darüber hinaus Klassenräume gebaut, in denen vor allem Sprachunterricht angeboten wurde. Im März 2020 brannten alle neun Räume ab. I'm Nazarin, I'm 27 years old and I'm from Afghanistan and it's about one year that uh, I have been living in Greece. My name is Yasser, I'm 17 years old from Afghanistan and it's been around six months that I'm with Refocus and studying filmmaking. I'm Milad, 22 years old and a big fan of movies <laughs> and one of Refocus Media Labs students. My name is Mahdi. I'm from Afghanistan, but I live in the, before the, in Iran. I'm Zahra, and uh, for three years I live here. My name is Yasser. I've been in this island for more than a year, and uh, here we are. The first semester we had one woman, one in the whole program. The rest was men. The next semester we had almost 50-50% ratio, and it was because of the first woman that signed for classes. She sent us a message on Facebook that she will be the first one to sign up. She was Syrian, Amani, and she was like, don't start the classes without me. I'm coming after work, I'll be there. All the boys and all the guys were just like, chivalry is not dead. They just opened the door, let her take the front row seat. And then she was just, she, then she led all of the video assignments. And then she was the director. And then she was the person who wanted the camera. She was running around with a camera here every time we had a practice. And some girls just noticed, she's like, yeah, you're running with a camera, what is this about? And she explained. And then suddenly the next day we have eight new girls, then more, and, and you know, it's an organic process. Für meine Zukunft wünsche ich mir, in einem Land zu leben, in dem meine Rechte geschützt sind. Women students I was working with, they are greater than us, actually, because they really, they care about the details. They're good in making films, yeah. Für mich war es eine völlig neue Erfahrung. Niemals hätte ich gedacht, wenn Männer anwesend sind oder eine Gruppe von Leuten, die mehr Erfahrung hat, dass ich einfach sagen darf, dass ich die Kamera übernehmen will. Ich hatte immer das Gefühl, dass ich weniger wert bin. 
Ich erinnere mich, als Douglas in der ersten Stunde fragte, wer will die Kamera in die Hand nehmen, gab es eine kurze, verlegene Stille. Und dann habe ich gesagt, ich will. Am Anfang war es etwas schwierig für mich, dass Männer und Frauen gemeinsam unterrichtet wurden. In der Klasse, in der ich zuerst war, war ich die einzige Frau und wenn ich eine Frage hatte, hätte ich einen Mann fragen müssen und das habe ich mich nicht getraut. Doch mit der Zeit kamen die Studenten auf mich zu und haben mich ermutigt, Fragen zu stellen, da sie es bereits gewohnt waren, mit Frauen zusammenzuarbeiten. Gender was not an issue in our classes. The difference of cultures was not an issue in our classes. We would have 12 different nations represented in our earliest groups. As I was living in Afghanistan and Iran, it was a kind of far distant hope and wish for me to be one day a journalist. So I, I wasn't even thinking about this. We were living in a village. So and when, when I was 12, I left my family and I went to the city to continue my education, uh, my school education, also uh, learn English and computer. So when I went there, I had no other friends uh, but movies and games. So I'm here since October uh, 2019, and I used to be an English teacher. And for the first time, I saw the poster. It was Rifika's classes, and I was very excited. I had a friend who were going there regularly, and he told me that there's a media classes and we went there and we saw Douglas in the classes and I asked him can I come into the classes he said yes but you have to come every day uh, then uh, there was one day that I got out of the camp with my friend Milad and uh, we started walking to one happy family and after two hours because we didn't know where it is we found one happy family I see some people that's with cameras and saying action that was like a That was amazing. And I was like, is this a filmmaking class? And uh, I, I really wanted to you know, be there. I thought maybe they were journalists, but no, they were students of Rifuka, so I, my journey started. You know, most of the people watch movies as, as a entertainment, uh, but for me, cinema and movie, it's art, and it's something that I can relate to. Uh, I mean, before I started classes, I was uh, thinking that, okay, now that I'm in Europe, what now? Uh, I mean, what, what's going to be my plan? I didn't know that I can achieve the dreams that I had even before. I, I was thinking that I'm a useless person. Uh, but this class gave me hope and uh, also it uh, instructed me in a way that I wanted. Photography is an immediate gratifying experience. You see the moment, you capture it, you're like immediately a photographer. It, it doesn't, you press the button once and if it worked, you're like, wow. Video is a slow burn. Video takes time. So it, it may take you a week, it could take you a year to make a great film. So how do you get them to the sense of becoming filmmakers, becoming journalists quickly? And then we realized that we needed to start creating like a tiered structure to uh, what people would be learning. Yeah, with the structure, just to sum up, it's, it's yes, one semester is four months. Then if you're still on the island and you still have the interest, you can go to the next level. Uh, and if you graduate from this one, you go to the next level. And every single level ends with a certificate. We're really, really proud of everything that you've done already. And uh, we can't wait to see the new things that will happen. And from Burundi, a really great storyteller and actor and photographer. Morning. Ernest, come on. Oh. The first four months of a program was always structured to get them to kind of taste a little bit of all of the different workflows for modern media communication. Some photography, some photo essay, visual storytelling through still pictures, some interview techniques, some sound design, then eventually bridge into video, so where they could tell stories quickly, convey emotions quickly. So all of the earliest assignments were uh, one minute long films. Me and my team, just decided to 
make a story about the uh, impact that social media has to the kids and teens these days. One night we all went to the same tent and uh, we started thinking how to do it and writing short storyboard. And uh, then after writing, we went to Douglas, he accepted it. And uh, then uh, he gave us the material and we went to Mitalini and we filmed. We just shoot it and the teacher told us, just send me the files and I will give them to other students in the town to edit it. So it's the practice for both in the Mitalini and Cam. And in my opinion, it's great. <laughs> want to always film about the camp and refugees and migrants all the time. So we thought maybe let's think about something new, something uh, which is not uh, related to mi migration and uh, refugees. I, I can't describe art, but what I can say, art is showing beautiness, something which is inside something. There are lots of movies who are just for entertainment and there is nothing really inside of it. There are also movies uh, who show you the art. N not saying that they don't have action, they also have action, but they, they show you something deeper and uh, they make you feel something. And uh, in a movie, uh, there's also music, there's a uh, cinematography. It's like painting, you, you include everything uh, to make this movie. When you show the beautiness of the world to people, it will automatically make them hopeful because this world is so dark. She was dreaming to be a balloon dancer and the, um, step by step how she could get to that hope and to that aim. And after that, we were working on our third film making. That's, uh, so something happened. It was lockdown, the burning of uh, OHF and uh, we couldn't make it. One day, this place was, was so colorful. But now I see all the black things around. It's like mm, our world is dark. my class for six months and I never changed you know I always had it here mm. it was the first wave of protests here on the island that ended up with fascist attack on refugees on NGOs our school was burned um, and there's nothing left of it Die Schule des Friedens, gegründet im Februar 2017, war die Heimat für mehr als 4000 Kinder, die über diese Insel zogen. Wir werden die Schule wieder aufbauen. Gemeinsam. Das Licht wird stärker sein als die Dunkelheit. Even after the fire destroyed the school, the next day they were like, so are we going to have class in Moria? And I was like, okay. So we went and had the class in Moria. Films have a lot of educational impacts. For me, it's very interesting how people, for example, in, in Korea are, are respecting each other and how people in America, for example, are doing business. That's what, you, what, what you're learning from movies. 
And then came the first big lockdown. They decided to close the camps. And on March 22nd, 22,000 people were on a full lockdown for six months. We were allowed to go inside and, um, and teach. We're teaching next to Moria in, a, in something that is literally a garage, a very expensive uh, and poor garage. And it went pretty well given the circumstances. So in that, in that clip, you have him on camera talking. So you can tell this story. the citizen journalism project, which is something on the side. So you can do this no matter which level you're attending at the moment. You can do it using the skills you have right now, whether it is just photography, whether it is some writing, or whether it is uh, producing footage for international media, for BBC, for The Guardian, for Bloomberg, for uh, SBS Dateline, and basically the students did all the work. People are scared from living in here. And when I am scared, that uh, uh, bad things happen to me and my family. Every night uh, it's happening, fighting in this camp, and people are being killed or stabbed. This virus is uh, not a joke. 14,000 people are living together. This virus might be a nightmare for all of us. But our program was never meant to be a documentary citizen journalism program. That was never our intent. In the earliest stages of what we were doing, it was always meant to be a much more cathartic escape on the daily level, both mentally and physically, from the camp. It was never meant to be learn these skills and then go document the misery that you deal with every day. This has been forced upon us through, this, this year in particular, this has been forced upon us through terrible circumstances well out of our control. Uh, and we have been stuck in a reactionary mode. Our earliest video assignments, our photography assignments, were always driven towards them, you know, creating stories that they were interested in telling, and none of them were really documentary-based. And then all of a sudden, all of these images started coming through, which were artistic depictions of the misery. When the fascism started, and then the lockdown happened, and then they were stuck inside, and then the international media was locked out, and they couldn't get access. And then all of a sudden, we had something that they wanted. Our students inside who had these skills now had documentation of what was happening that the international media couldn't access. And it changed the level of engagement dramatically. It flipped it upside down, totally inverted. Now all of a sudden, the young media creators inside had something to contribute. They weren't being seen as victims anymore. On the island, Refocus is the only source that migrants can film for. And that's what most of the networks wanted. They wanted to have, for example, pictures of inside of the camp. So they were getting in touch with Douglas. And Douglas uh, was uh, putting us in touch with those networks. So we had the chance to also express our work there and also, you know, give them something to publish. I wrote an article with, yeah, Al Jazeera. It was published in the Al Jazeera website. If they're not telling the world who they are and why they're doing what they're doing, then they're invisible. Sie wurden nicht unsichtbar. In der Nacht vom 8. auf den 9. September 2020 brannte das offizielle Rick und der sogenannte Dschungel Morias. Am nächsten Morgen löschte ein zweites Feuer alles übrig gebliebene endgültig aus. Die Zerstörung des Camps, in dem die meisten der Studierenden lebten, verdeutlichte die Situation auf Lesbos. Und sie selbst waren es, die sie sichtbar machten. Started. 
Heimat ist die Landschaft, in der man nicht verschwinden würde. Sonst ist alle Landschaft darauf angelegt, uns zu verschlucken. Alle haben die Heimat mitgenommen, ins Grab, in die Ferne, ins Vergessen. Und wie viel kann man wegnehmen? Und man nennt es immer noch meine Heimat. This year of 2020 has been nothing but a, uh, it's just been nothing but obstacle upon obstacle for our students. And their, their classes and their safety and their development has constantly been um, just disrupted. We had a fire that destroyed the school and closed the center. Then you have the lockdown. Then you have COVID is finally identified in the camp and they lock it down even harder. Then a fire destroys the camp. And now people are allowed out of this camp from certain hours to certain hours. OHF is able to open again and we're able to resume classes and now the new lockdown. So now we have to go online. I can see your video, but I can't hear you. Fatima, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Mahmoud says he cannot connect. Let me see if I can send him a direct link again. Fatima, can you hear us now? Fatima, can you hear us? Let's see. Uh, Mahmoud's in. Someone else. Mobina's in. Okay, hopefully we have a decent group now. Here we go. Everybody turn on their cameras. Hey, Mahmoud. What's up, Ali? Yeah, hi. Let's see. Mobina is connecting to audio. I don't see her camera yet. Hey, Milad, what's up? So, here everybody split. <laughs> hey, Nahib. I got lost Fifi now. Uh... Hello, Douglas. Douglas, can you hear me? Doug? Yes, awesome. I can hear you, yes. This is not the same as having class, but uh, it's better than, than not seeing you today, yes. so. Nice, nice hair, Mila. It's very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> very nice. I just woke up. <laughs> the students are constantly saying, how can we have class? What can we do? And they just keep asking, what are we going to shoot today? What are we going to learn today? What are we going to work on today? So we've got Mitalini in the house. We've got Karatepe. We've got the warehouse. We've got three spots in Karatepe. We've got Terni. Mobin is with us. Cool. For us, we just keep finding new ways to deal with the new obstacles, you know, we, we can't stop. We have to find a way to continue to support their growth. So let's look at this first image. Can everyone see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about this shot. What kind of a shot is this? It's a wide shot. Yeah. Where are we? We're in the desert, right? Yeah, desert. What about now? Close. Now we have a close shot, right? Now we have a close up of this guy. Okay. So is this man on the screen happy? No. When I show you this image, what do we see in the distance? The difference between here and here. I can see two people. Yes, awesome. Teaching here combines people that think alike. We, we have the same values and we have the same goals to give skills to people and to fight this crisis with all means we have available. Morfisa, mm, can you switch off the microphone? Nargis, also you hear me? Because I don't see you. And where are Samir and Masood and everybody else? Where are they? You don't know? 
So then we just start because you all you send me pictures today, so we can talk about them. Is that okay? So listen, the reason why I show you the scene is that this is 31 shots, and all of it was done to introduce us to this guy. You need to put the mask on if you go outside of your tent because if you don't do it, you have to pay a fine, okay? So don't forget this. And so we will start with you, Nalise, then. I will show you all the pictures. So that's the first picture. And then we have this one. This one, where she's doing her homework. Every story has basically three acts. This kind of act one, act two, act three. And we want to build up tension in a character or a relationship. We're going to talk about this particular moment in a film. You would have a big, big moment when the character has to make a decision. So we actually see a lot of things now. Like she's playing outside, working with her friend. What do you say, Samir? What do you think about the story? Do you remember yesterday we talked about The Matrix? This big, big important scene is really about Neo meeting Morpheus. And the whole entire scene is really about two guys sitting across from each other on chairs. But they actually took 72 shots to tell that situation. With movies, I got to know how people behave in different situations, for example. In a survival situation, how would they behave? Would they betray another person just for their own life or just for food? Would they do it? And, and, and I, will, I witnessed that on, on, on my way from, for example, crossing the sea, that they, they would do it. And, uh, you know, movies are not just entertainment. It's uh, also, uh, it has a lot to say about humanitarian um, actions and how would a human behave in a certain situation. And, uh, you know, every movie has its own uh, impact on you. If, if you. if you really focus on, on the film and not just watch it, if you, if you taste it. We're running out of time now, so we will connect again tomorrow. And uh, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow, hearing all the ideas that you come up with. OK, so far the movie about everybody. Bye, everybody. You first. You first. God bless you first. Bye-bye. <laughs> awesome. Douglas really care about us. And exactly when Muriel burnt and uh, we were on the street, he stayed at night with us and slept with us next in, into the street, on the roads, and helping us. And he's really like a father. Wherever I go and the older I become, I will never forget them because they made this way for me. I really don't know how to thank them. Sonia und Douglas sind in meinem Leben wichtig, als Lehrer, als meine Mentoren. Sie sind immer verständnisvoll und hören mir zu, auch wenn es um private Sachen geht, wenn ich etwas nicht verstehe oder bei Amtsgängen Hilfe brauche. Ich kann mit ihnen über alles reden. Sie sind mitfühlend und tun alles, was in ihrer Macht steht. Ich habe großen Respekt für Ihre Arbeit und ich möchte gern, dass Sie auf mich stolz sind. Darum versuche ich, eine gute Schülerin zu sein. I remember I was in Garage, which camp was in lockdown and we had classes in Garage. And there were two girls came to us and they said, we're doing sound. And I was like, it's boring. Who cares about sound? And they were saying, sound is half of the video. Without sound, nothing is worse. And <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I was just saying, who cares about sound? And said, just go outside, pick a microphone, and record whatever you're interested in. And we went outside, we record everything, water, walking, wind, and everything, actually. And we edited it, and then they said, close your eyes and listen. This is the magic of sound because it shows you, it gives you a different perspective. You know, you have your imagination based on what you're hearing. And how was your class today? Two said they are sick. I don't know if that's just an excuse. Like, I'm fine with that, but I was just, because two were really sleeping, they would, like showed me a video. 
it happens that people get very depressed, especially now when they know that this lockdown will probably not end after three weeks. Because that's the point, because now they start saying, I don't want to take pictures, there's nothing happening. And I try to push them, but I don't want to push them so hard also. We had so many talks about maybe, okay, at this moment you don't feel like getting up, taking pictures, doing something or anything, but you have to force yourself to move your brain. Mm -hmm. If you really feel like photography or filmmaking is not for you, you have to force yourself to find something to read. Uh, to play a game with somebody, to get out every single day out of this tent, uh, the bed, and do something. Because it's a matter for you of whether this camp will make you or break you. Let me know how it goes, but if you want me to like, talk to somebody, I can do it. What now happened, they, like, the police was coming in the tent to check if they have the mask. Because at one point they were all like making this and I was like, what is happening? And they said, police came in. And I read this, that they have to put the mask on in the tent. There's not enough mask. There's no enough, way to do any laundry there, nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like women do it in the sea. Mm -hmm. I would be happy to wash my underwear when I'm there, not thinking about the mask. First quarantine, it was this, this like trough of emotion and engagement. Uh, and it was when they just kept adding the quarantine every two weeks. That just, when we were feeling it too. So we started creating these little video clips Go to a place where you feel calm. Find something that makes you feel like somewhat happy. Like what's the, what's the safe space for you here? Suddenly all of them wanted to do it because after maybe like, you know, two months of reporting nonstop and recording those horrible things inside Moria, they were all like, wow, something else, something new. Like someone posted yesterday on one of the Instagram stories about how they watched the sunrise. Mm. And then they realized after the sun rose that they were behind this barbed wire fence. Mm. You know, and it like, but then they thought, well, yeah, I'm stuck behind this fence, but I still got the sunrise. And they were sending us these gorgeous pictures of this woman sitting with this, like, Lesbos pink sky in the background, and it was just like, yeah, come to Lesbos, right? Come to vacation <laughs> in the new camp in Moria. I mean, like, because it was so beautiful from that vantage point, and then if that person just turns around and then you're in the tents. If they don't come, they don't. We, we lost many students this okay. year. Like, really from this, um, the group, that is Doug's group, many left the island, mm -hmm. many were transferred, but I think there was like a group of several people who just, just disappeared, like vanished mm -hmm. from our side. Our big challenge here is that we never know when people will leave the island. They are being moved to places where they do not have access to anything similar to what we are having here. It's very upsetting that Sometimes this is the end, like they really want to leave this island, especially when Moria was still standing here. Everybody just wanted to leave this horrible place and have a chance somewhere else. And yes, they are moved somewhere, but they are cut off of every possible support help uh, that they had here on this island. Nachdem Moria abgebrannt war, lebten die Menschen zehn Tage auf der Straße zwischen Polizei, Militär, Journalisten, Tränengas und Humanitären. Bis sie laut UNHCR am 17. September begannen, in das neue Camp zu ziehen. 7500 Geflüchtete. Der Platz liegt am Meer, auf einem ehemaligen Truppenübungsplatz. Nach der Pandemie und dem Feuer kam nun, biblisch fast, die Flut. Auch im neuen Camp sind die Studierenden vor Ort und berichten live von der Situation, in der sie gezwungen sind zu leben. The, this experience has has changed who we are. It's changed us deeply. And I can't imagine how it's changed them. 
And when we have deep conversations with them, they talk about what's been taken away from them, what's been lost, that they can never get back. So the only thing that we are motivated by right now is to provide some chance for something new to come, to come alive out of this rubble, which is their present. A lot of our students have the same aspirations that you have, to be on a stage, to be behind the camera, to be on the camera, to have their voice be heard, to literally sing. And they deserve that right to have it. Noch während unserer Dreharbeiten musste Douglas Griechenland und den Schengen-Raum verlassen. Auf Anordnung der Polizei. Nach Ausstrahlung einer BBC-Reportage, für die er und seine Studierenden Material gefilmt und Interviews gegeben hatten, wurde Douglas verhaftet. In dem Zusammenhang wurde angeordnet, dass er die Insel innerhalb von 30 Tagen zu verlassen hätte. Sonja und Douglas werden nach Warschau gehen, ins Exil, wie Doug sagt, auf unbestimmte Zeit. When I became a director, we can make a movie out of it. Of course. Yeah. It's, a, it's not amazing making a movie with your teacher. This is a, a lifetime. This is a lifetime connection. Love you. Me too. And we'll see you very soon, okay? Thank you for everything. <lacht> Von Warschau wird der Online-Unterricht weitergehen. Sie machen immer weiter. Nazanin arbeitet für eine italienische NGO als Übersetzerin, die zum Thema häusliche Gewalt in Moria Frauen interviewt. Yasatari engagiert sich in der Antifa, übersetzt und verteilt freitags Essen an Obdachlose. Nachts schreibt er Kurzgeschichten. Yasa Akbari hält an seinem Traum fest, Schauspieler zu werden. Milat wartet, wie alle anderen auch, auf den Abschluss seines Asylverfahrens, um endlich diese Insel verlassen zu können. Sara und Media arbeiten bei Mosaik, eine Organisation, die aus Rettungsbooten und Schwimmwesten Taschen und Rucksäcke näht. <lacht> 